I get email every day, practically. As a matter of fact, I just did a Christmas record with Bob Kulik. He does all these collections of uh, disparate bunches of people to do these great uh, compilation records. And we did a Alice Cooper Sings. I think a Santa Claus is coming to town, but a Santa C-L-A-W-S Claus is coming to town. <laughs> Alice Cooper Sings. Uh, I forgot who else played on it. Just an incredible lineup. And then he had me do another track, and Greg Bissonette was going to play drums. So Greg was there when I was, when I was there, and we started hanging out. He was in the room. We started going through the whole first uh, side of Eat Him and Smile, and all the Dave stories, and oh god, we laughed ourselves. Just we had such a great time. All the all the incredible. Well, that was a blessing. I'd love to do another Eat Him and Smile tour. I bet it would do really well too. Because like I said, I get a lot of a lot of email from people all the time. The main reason I would like to do it is, I, you know, it's, it would be a lot of money, of course, but I'm, I've never been a money-motivated guy. Uh, that, that's, of course, nice. I'd be a liar to say it would be nice to have that, of course, but what I would really like to have is do some shows as, and end it up as being a really friendly, cool thing, you know, because I think that's how it should be. Talus, back in Buffalo, when that ended, it kind of ended on a bad note, and, you know, those guys were my friends for years, and we kind of, you know, that happens with almost every band, you end up like that. But when I went back and did a few reunions with them, we had a, just a great time telling stories about what we used to go through. We had, and I thought, man, it'd be great if we could do that with Mr. Big, same thing, you know. Because we went through some amazing stuff with that band. And it would be great to, to relive it a little bit. And plus, I think uh, a lot of fans would be very happy about it, you know. Because the band, from the email I got, the band and songs meant a lot to a lot of people. And that's really the, the main thing, you know. It would be, it'd be nice to do for a lot of people. So I hope, you know, I... I uh, I don't know if everybody would be into it at this point. I know I am, uh, and I'd be happy to do it. And, you know, who knows? It would be really cool. Opus One, my first band uh, that I actually played out in, 11 guys, uh, trombone, trumpet, tenor, and alto sax, three singers, guitar, bass, drums, keyboard. Uh, I remember all the guys' names, too. Myself, uh, Mike Migliori, great sax player, went on, still plays a lot, uh, alto player. Uh, Dick Fran on tenor, Ron Mandola on trombone, I can't believe I remember, Jim Board on original trombone. We had Craig Corka, Jim Elwood, and Bill Nice on lead vocals. Myself, Bruce Picano guitar, Ted Reinhardt on drums. Ted was one of the, I think he was one of the founding guys for, um, God, it was a Buffalo band that was kind of a smooth jazz can't remember the name. Had a bunch of hits and stuff. Anyway, he was a tremendous drummer. And uh, we had uh, Rick Enderby and then on keyboards and then Chet Folger replaced him. Wow, I can't believe I remember that. It was hilarious. But uh, we just, I remember we did our first gig and I made $7 because there's so many guys in the band. <laughs> By the time we paid off the rental truck and the gear, we won a battle of the bands. Of the bands. We played mostly uh, Chicago Blood, Sweat and Tears because it was a horn band. But I, uh, we were talking earlier before this interview, the, the Chicago bass players, Pete Cetera, right? And uh, man, amazing bass lines. And uh, the uh, introductions, which has the uh, 198 part in it. One two three one two one two three one two 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 but yeah, uh, Chicago Blood, Sweat, and Tears. We did uh, the Vehicle by the Eyes of March. Uh, a bunch of, uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff uh, from that era, the horn band uh, era. of the. It was kind of cool because uh, it, it, it hit me to a lot of music that I, I might have missed. Then I got into a lot of uh, sax and uh, almost jazz for a while before I 
really got back into the whole rock thing. Uh, Eddie Harris, uh, Les McCann, Eddie Harris, Swiss Movement, great record. Was always been weighing up uh, Oscar Peterson and stuff like that earlier. I was just kidding around with it. Uh, Herbie Mann, Live at the Village Gate, uh, Coming Home Baby. We did that and stuff. So, uh, but uh, yeah, Opus One, my first band. Pretty cool. <laughs> 